audible? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Reverend Carla, for your kind words and touch by them. And thank all the officers and the members of the Allen St. John's AME Church. It's a privilege for me to be here with you this morning, breaking the word of God. And I want to thank all of you for giving me this opportunity. <clears throat> Let's bow our heads and look to the Lord in prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity that you have given us on this day when the church began in first century that we are able to, able to commemorate that, that we are able to come together to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, whom you have given us as a gift. And Lord, as we gather our thoughts together to hear your voice, I pray that Lord, you would bless each one of us and open our ears and our minds to be able to hear your voice and humble ourselves to accept whether we like it or not and to be able to apply your word into our lives so that we might live for the very purpose that you have kept us here on this earth. For we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> if I'm not asking too much to you, I'd request you to kindly stand wherever you are with me in honor of the hundreds of lives that have been murdered across America. <clears throat> and let us just maintain a moment of silence, praying to God for the departed souls and for their families, that God would grant them peace and that God in his mighty power would bring an end to all this injustice and corruption In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The scripture passage has been uh, already read to us, and I had selected the same passage that is Acts chapter 24, uh, chapter 2, beginning from verses 1 to 13, and it has been wonderfully read to us by our sisters, and I want to thank them for that wonderful reading. Uh, before we move on uh, into our sermon, I would like to uh, briefly draw a little background of this day that we are celebrating. Uh, <clears throat> in the Old Testament, when the Israelites were under bondage in Egypt, on the last day of their life in Egypt, there was this event which is known as Passover. And the angel of death, before he could walk on the streets of Egypt, the Lord had commanded that every Israelite family would sacrifice a lamb and put the blood over their doorposts. And when the angel of death walked through those streets, all the firstborn children of the Egyptian families died, but the Israelite families were saved. And then they were uh, they were allowed to go for their sacrifice, leaving Egypt once for all. That's the occasion of Pass Passover 
the feast of Passover, which has been celebrated for so many years until we see the actual fulfillment of it in the New Testament when Jesus Christ is sacrificed as the Passover lamb during the Passover feast. 50 days after the Passover <clears throat> event, in the Old Testament, they have they had uh, this festival known as the Festival of Weeks, Festival of Harvest, Festival of Gathering, which is also called as Pentecost. But then in the New Testament, we see that this is the day when God sent his Holy Spirit, that is the third person of the Godhead, into this world once and for all. After Jesus was taken up, he had already given this prophecy in John chapter 16, beginning from verse 5 to 15. And that prophecy was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came on the disciples who were gathered in the upper room. But this is also considered as the day when the church was born. <clears throat> Okay. Now I want to draw certain um, certain uh, contrasts and similarities to the experience of the disciples on the first day of the beginning of the church on this earth and the church that we are experiencing in 2020. We have read the passage and it says... Uh, that they were all in one place, they came together. The contrast is, we are unable to come together. Mm. We are all locked up in our homes. We are all in different places. They were all in one accord, because they were not in their homes, they were not in their workplaces, they were not out in the fields, they were gathered all under one roof. So they were in one accord. They had left all the outside world on the other side of the door. The door was locked. <clears throat> they were in one mind. They were in unison. But we, we are all locked up in our houses. We are thinking what would be the next meal? What am I going to do with my finances? About the chores in the homes today? all different kinds of thoughts. So we are not in one accord. Of course, uh, virtually maybe we have come together. <clears throat> but I wonder if we are in one accord. Hmm. They all volunteered themselves to be locked in that room, upper room, because of the fear of being arrested and persecuted. But we are, have been forced into a lockdown situation. We cannot come out of our houses. While being locked up, for, they, they were waiting on God. The disciples were waiting on God. And I want to ask this question. We have been in lockdown for more than two and a half months now. Yes. How much of our time have we spent in waiting on God. It matters. It matters. It isn't a case of just how many hours, but the time, the quality time that we spend with God every day. I can tell from my experience in my family, we used to, uh, we have our own personal devotions, but for the past many days, <clears throat> Ever since this lockdown, we would spend at least two hours in the morning sitting together as a family and studying the word of God. And then again, another one or two hours in the night, praying, praying for people, praying for the church, praying for the world. And we have seen the results of it, the fruits of it. Another contrast that I want to bring to you is on that day of Pentecost, you know, it was a happy occasion yeah. for them because they brought their gifts. It, were, it was a harvest time. So out of their harvest, they brought their offerings, their gifts into the presence of God. It was a joyous occasion. Yes. 
And in New Testament, instead of those people bringing their gifts, God gave them the gift, gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit gave gifts to everyone hey. who was saved by Jesus. And then there was another gift that was given. They were, they were given power. Power. I'll tell you what that power is. <clears throat> How are we in our situation today? We are in mourning. There is death and mayhem all around us. And if we have the experience of being born again, we have the indwelling of the Spirit in us. But are we in communion with the Holy Spirit? Are we in sync with God? Hmm. If we have the Holy Spirit with us, we have a gift in us because nobody is deprived of that gift who accepts Jesus and whom the Holy Spirit has given. Every one of them have, have a gift, but not many of us recognize that gift. Not many of us have found out that gift to be able to use it for the glory of God. Most Christians around the world are unaware of their gifts because if all the Christians in the world were using their gifts, the world would have been a different place. Yes. And then those disciples on that day of Pentecost received power. You see, there were just 120 of them, all from Galilee. It says in that passage, these are all Galileans. That's what the people say. So they were all from Galilee, 120 of them. Within hours of receiving the Holy Spirit, they became 3,120. This is not a feat that can be achieved by any human being or human institution. This was the power of God. This was the power of the Holy Spirit. And those people who were local Galileans had become global, international. You re, you, if you read those, the people who were there from representing from different countries, they were all from far lands and they took the gospel with them after that event. And I want to ask you this question. How have we used that power? Lord have mercy. Alan St. John, this is a question not asked by me. This is a question that God is asking you. In your 153 years of existence, what have you done for God? How have you used the power that God has empowered you through his Holy Spirit? And this is not just a question that God is asking you as an individual or as a church. God is asking the same question to every church across the globe and even to the church in India. We received the gospel in first century AD. It's been more than 2000 years now. We are still just two and a half, per, two and a half percentage of all the people here who worship God, who are Christians. We haven't done our responsibility. And the church all across the globe has failed mm. in this responsibility. We lack this power because we are not in sync with the Holy Spirit. How often do you address the Holy Spirit in your prayers? Hallelujah. How often do you, do you speak to this Holy Spirit? It's not just some wind. It's not just some any spirit that we talk about. It is the third person of God. Third person of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit indwells in us, in you, in me, in every Christian across the globe. And then I was thinking about this pandemic that we are experiencing. God is wiser. You know why? Because if this pandemic was man-made, 
then we would be sitting in the middle of third world war hmm. but god is wiser he wants to teach us a lesson <clears throat> I was, uh, uh, you know, ever since I was told uh, to break the word with you this, mo uh, this morning, I had been meditating and uh, the Lord, in one of my meditations, gave me a verse which I want to share with you. Um, it is in, uh, let me, let me share the screen. Okay. Are you able to see? Okay, wonderful. Um, yes, it says, uh, it, it is from Isaiah 24, 5 and 6, where it says, The earth suffers the sins of its people, for they have twisted God's instructions, violated his laws, and broke his everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth, its people must pay the price for their sins. Now I said, Lord, this is not this is not for us now. This is for the future. Because all of you would agree that this is for the future. But then the Lord said, this is a foretaste of the future. What you're experiencing is a foretaste of the future. Now I have uh, I have uh, done a little uh, search on the pandemics now here is another slide if you look at that pandemics in human history if you look at the 2000s beginning from 2000 till 2020 the frequency of the pandemics has increased like never before and the number of people dying has also increased like never before what does that indicate you know, we are living in a world where we um, sh shy away from something that is called a sin. The passage that I read to you from Isaiah, the crux of that passage is sin. And it is sin which has brought that curse upon the people. It is sin that God hates. And in these days, we are increasingly shying away from this that is called sin. I have studied uh, theology for almost, what, 12 years, uh, two bachelor's degrees, two postgraduate degrees. And I have so many of my classmates and friends from the seminaries. And it's very unfortunate to see that a whole lot of them do not believe in the Bible as the word of God. They believe Bible is just an old history book. They look at the God of the Bible as a cruel, despot, sadist ruler. They, uh, everything that Bible says sin, they have twisted its meaning. And they call it, uh, I mean, in the, in the name of personal or individual freedom, individual space, individual right, individual choice. You know, these are the things that has taken the front seat and God, God's will, God's word has been left out. Every biblical sin these days is sin no more. It's not a sin anymore. And as we read in Isaiah 24, 5 and 6, the Bible, the word of God has been twisted. It has been violated. Um, it has been broken more now than ever in the history of human beings. You know why? Because we have reached the zenith of knowledge. Hmm. We are able to clone human beings. We are able to create designer babies, which will be a new race. None of this virus, none of this pandemic would ever affect them. They can achieve great feats. We have gone to the space. We are trying.
trying to create habitation in the Mars, all because we have reached the zenith of knowledge, of intellect. And intellect and knowledge, which is Sophia in the Bible, has now replaced God. And that's why we don't talk about God anymore. We try to prove that God doesn't exist anymore with the Sophia, the knowledge that God has given to us. Yesterday, one of my students had invited a, a debate whether God exists. I told him, be careful, be careful, because there is an enemy who is trying to destabilize you from your faith. He is a seminary student who has done his postgraduate in theology. He said, this is just for debate. I said, whatever it is, just be careful. Hmm. And that is why this curse, this curse is a real thing. It, just, just look around the world during this lockdown. The birds are happy, the animals are happy, the earth is being healed, the environment is more clean, the river system, the water system, the water bodies are being healed. Only the human beings are affected. Hmm. Everything that is related to human beings, human society, human life, that is what has been affected because they are guilty of twisting, violating, and breaking God's law, God's covenant. And we, living in this generation, are equally guilty along with the human society because we are humans. We are all living in fear, in anxiety, in worry, in uncertainty because the world is never going to be the same as we had experienced before the lockdown, never. We will look at in suspicion at every person once the lockdown is over, whether the person has a disease that can affect you. We're going to be extra careful. We're never going to hug anymore. We're never going to shake hand anymore. All that culture is gone. I wonder if we have to have many services in our churches because they are not going to allow because of the social distance you cannot fill all the pews in a pew if you were sitting five or six of them maybe just two or three would sit everything is going to change from now on and i want to ask you this question that what are you going to do for God? Or what have you done for God? God who loved you, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who came down to this earth, who was abused, who was insulted, who suffered pain, who was almost lynched, and who died on the cross. His body was broken. His blood was shed so that you and I might have life. What have we done in response to this great sacrifice that Jesus made? And God in his mercy, despite our unworthiness, despite our failures, has given the third person of Godhead to be with us so that we might live a life that is worthy of the cross, that is worthy of the resurrection, that we might live a life in order to build the kingdom of God, in order to bring glory to the name of God, in order to declare the goodness of God, in order to show to the world that the power of God is more powerful than any other power in the, on, on the face of this earth. Because you know the scripture says, it's not by might, it's not by, uh, what's that? Power. Not by might, not by? Power. Yes, not by power, but the spirit says the Lord. And it is that spirit that has been given to us. The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Are we in communion with that Holy Spirit? There is no other time that we can more meditate on this aspect 
of the third person of God than this day. And let this be a new beginning. Let us renew our relationship with the Holy Spirit whom God has given to us and through whom we have received the gifts of the Spirit, through whom we have received the power of the Almighty, Omnipotent God to turn the world upside down. That's the power that God has given to you and me mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit. We cannot leave that power to lie dormant within us. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God and we have to give an account of it. And I want to invite you as an individual, as a church, to turn to God, to seek his face, to save ourselves, our nation, our generation, our world. Let me share another passage here. It says, uh, it's, it's taken from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. He will hear, he will forgive and he will heal and he is able to do what he says that he would do. But we got to humble ourselves. We got to pray. We got to seek his face. And we got to turn from our wicked ways. And we got to acknowledge that the word of God is true. It is real. And it is for us. And during this lockdown, I want to call all of you. That if God has kept you and me alive today, perhaps because we were created, we were made to be alive for such a time as this, so that we might go down on our knees and seek the face of God, mm. that we might seek forgiveness for our people, for our generation, that God would heal our land that God would save our people. And finally, quarantine and pray, because God says, Isaiah 26, 20, go my people, enter your rooms and shut your doors behind you. Take cover, for in a little while the fury will be over. Amen. Provided you seek my face. Mm. And so it has been said, so let it be done. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. We as a family would like to sing this, uh, sing a song. And I call upon my family to come forward. Please. Come, come and say, you're losing time. Okay. Yeah. God sent his. Okay. Who is it? God sent his. Oh, 